Most people think syrup is where tree income is. It isn't even close. Across North America, private woodlots are quietly producing compounds that sell for $40 to $300 per pound, materials traded by buyers, and raw inputs that small shops resell into five-figure niche markets. While the landowners burn it or mow past it. If you own trees, I'm not going to show you foraging. I'm going to show you forced scarcity products, biological materials people import from overseas, and chemicals your land already makes for free. Some of these regenerate every year, some only appear when your woods look neglected, and some are harvested without cutting a single tree. If you got forest, you've probably been ignoring your highest margin crop. Let's fix that. If you've got 10 mature hardwoods, you're standing on two to $5,000 in harvestable material this year that never shows up on a property appraisal. If you've got pines, you're already growing saleable resin. If you've got oaks, you're already growing tannins. If you've got willows, you're already growing compounds. If you've got birch, you're already growing lab-grade extract. The tree is manufacturing it whether you harvest it or not. One tap pine can drip half a gallon of resin a season. Do the math on 10. Do the math on 50. Will coppice yields bark measured in tons per acre, not pounds? Oak bark is exported globally as a chemical input, not burned as scrap. Birch bark is scraped for compounds doctors are studying in cancer clinics. And none of this requires cutting the tree down. Food from trees that isn't fruits. Trees feed you long before they flower. The calorie layer lives in bark, cambium, fungi, and needles, not just in apples and nuts. The inner bark of birch, pine, and linden has been eaten across northern Europe, Scandinavia, and indigenous North America for thousands of years, not as garnish, as starch. In pine and birch, the cambium layer runs 40 to 60% carbohydrate by dry weight. When dried and ground, it produces a flour-like powder that stores for years and blends into bread, porridge, and soup. In Finland alone, over two million people use pine bark flour during the famine years of the 1860s to survive crop failure, not optionally, systematically. Trees don't just feed your mouth, they feed biology. Chaga, reishi, and lion's mane pull minerals out of hardwoods that no crop field can replicate. Chaga grows almost exclusively on mature birch. It concentrates betulin and betulinic acid from the bark into one of the densest antioxidant profiles in, in any wild organism. Lion's mane converts lignin into nerve growth compounds. Reishi converts dead wood into immune active polysaccharides. Forest mushrooms aren't vegetables, they're biochemical filters. Needles are not filler either. Young pine needle tips contain four to five times more vitamin C per gram than oranges by weight. And the resin acids in spruce and fir support respiratory function better than most shelf products. You'll never farm needle calories per acre, but your woods are already growing medicinal nutrition on vertical surface area instead of soil. Food in a forest doesn't show up on a yield chart. It shows up as concentration. Resins, gums, and saps. Every tree runs chemistry. Resin is not waste. It's stored defense. Gum is not leakage. It's plant-side polymer manufacturing. Pine resin is the raw feedstock for turpentine, rosin, pitch, varnish, medicinal salves, and waterproof coatings. Spruce produces turpin antiseptics, stronger than most lab synthetics. Fir balsams are still used in microscopy for bonding and optics. Cherry, plum, and peach exude gum arabic like polymers. Those gums are still processed into food stabilizers, inks, adhesives, and traditional medicine. Poplar buds ooze aromatic resins used in tinctures and industrial fragrance blends. Resin chemistry matters because trees concentrate what crops dilute. Turpins, phenols, esters, acids, these aren't fragile compounds. They're sap born, bark stored, heat stable. Markets don't pay for appearance, they pay for purity and potency. Raw pine resin today sells retail for $12 to $20 per pound for medicinal and craft use. Refined rosin and balsam derivatives sell higher after fractioning. Nobody buys trees. They buy turpentine cuts, balsam concentrates, resin distillates, gum polysaccharides. The harvest surface is an acreage, it's bark. Every living trunk is a vertical processing plant that never shuts down. Medicinals hidden in plain sight. Every forest is a resource that never closes. The medicine lives in bark, buds, leaves, and outer tissue. 
the parched trees used to defend themselves. White willow bark contains silicin, the compound that became aspirin, not metaphorically, chemically. Willow bark extract still sells for $25 to $30 per pound wholesale, depending on grind and alkaloid concentration. Birch bark contains betulin, one of the highest yield anti-inflammatory and antiviral triterpenes ever isolated from a tree. It's studied in oncology research, active in wound healing, and extracted commercially by weight, not by tree. Cottonwood buds are the backbone of propolis analogs and pain salves. One mature tree can yield several gallons of resinous buds each spring. Same compounds bees collect, same antimicrobial spectrum, different supply chain. A slippery elm inner bark is one of the few neutral mucilage medicines still used clinically for digestive repair and esophageal inflammation. The bark powder sells for more per pound than high-end mushrooms, and it comes from something that grows feral. Along creek lines, oak gals, not acorns, are harvested globally for tannic acid. They're used for leather curing, medical astringents, and natural ink manufacture. One oak gal can contain more tannins than pounds of bark. Lichens like eusnia and reindeer moss concentrate antibiotic chemistry from the air itself. These organisms don't grow on soil, uh, they mine atmosphere with biology. Uh, here's the economic line farmers miss. Forest medicine doesn't scale by acreage, it scales by surface area and chemistry density. They pay for alkaloids, glycosides, resins, and acids. People are paying premium prices for compounds that landowners scrap, mow, and bulldoze. If your woods hold bark, they hold medicine, craft, and specialty products. Trees also manufacture what factories forgot how to make, not decor, materials. Bark is not junk, it's industrial fiber. Basewood, tulip poplar, cedar, and willow produce bark strong enough for cordage and basketry. When stripped correctly, the tensile strength of linden bass fiber rivals jute, and it's still one of the best natural rope materials in cold climates. Wood ash isn't trash either, it's potassium carbonate. One five gallon bucket of hardwood ash contains enough soluble potash to make lye for soap, food processing, animal salves, leather tanning, traditional wood finishes. Pine, pitch, and spruce resin are natural adhesives, still used by bowers, leather workers, and instrument makers. Charcoal, not grilling charcoal, is an entire industry in itself. Biochar, activated carbon, forage fuel, soil amendment, filtration. One cord of hardwood charcoal can outperform tons of raw wood depending on how it's processed. Dyes also bleed straight out of trees. Walnut hulls produce permanent brown. Alder bark gives black reds. Oak and maple make tan through gold. Birch gives soft yellows. Wood felt, compressed wood fiber is the renewable base for insulation, acoustic panels, and industrial felts. Uh, trees produce materials cities have forgotten how to make. Uh, not because they're obsolete, but because no one remembers the source. Tree services that pay. This is where forest stops being romantic and starts being contractual. Some money never touches a saw. Seed collection is regulated supply. Native nurseries, conservation orgs, and reforestation programs pay for oak acorns, walnut seeds, pawpaw, hickory, persimmon, chestnut genetics, not for volume, for lineage. Sign wood is another quiet market. Fruit growers and grafting operations pay for disease resistance, heritage genetics, hardness zones, old varieties they can't buy in bulk. Forest mitigation has turned woods into billable infrastructure. Creek buffers, erosion repair, wetland restoration, slope stabilization, windbreak installation. Government and private contracts pay landowners to produce biology where bulldozers fail. Mushroom logs are not farm foods. They are forced assets. Oaks, maples, and poplar cut to length sell wholesale to specialty mushroom producers by the truckload because high-density hardwood is infrastructure for a fungal economy. Carbon is no longer abstract. Standing biomass is already being measured, monetized, and contracted. Restoration supply chains need native plants, seed banks, bioregional species, erosion control cuttings, reforestation stock, your woods may already qualify for money without harvesting anything. Not because someone feels bad, because biology is cheaper than steel. The pattern nobody teaches. Why don't you stop thinking in species and start thinking in outputs? Every tree changes. Every tree produces four things at once. Chemistry, oils, sugars, acids, 
alkaloids, resins, tannins. This is the part that medical, fragrance, and natural products industries pay for. Structure, fibers, vessels, bark layers, root systems, wood density. This is where cordage, charcoal, tool handles, baskets, and felting material come from. Partners, fungi, bacteria, insects, lichens. The living systems attached to a tree often exceed the value of the tree itself. Cycles, leaf drop, bud set, sap flow, resin bleed, mast years. The clock matters more than the calendar. That's the framework. Whenever you walk your land, stop asking, what kind of tree is this? Ask instead, what does this tree produce besides wood? Beginner mistakes that kill value. Most people don't lose money selling the wrong thing. They lose money destroying what makes it valuable. Here's how that happens fast. Stripping bark too aggressively kills the chemistry engine you're trying to harvest. Commercial harvesting tools designed for speed, not material integrity. Wrong season. Harvesting chemistry when the tree isn't producing it. Over harvesting. Stripping faster than biology can rebuild. Selling wrong. Moving material before value is added. No drying. Rot destroys compounds long before you can see it. No storage. Moisture and sunlight delete yield invisibly. The hard truth is simple. Knowing the tree isn't enough, you must know the phase of the tree. Because trees don't produce the same thing year round. They operate on chemistry clocks. And if you're harvesting on calendar time instead of biological time, you're always too early or too late. Trees are working every day on your land whether you touch them or not. They're producing compounds, the materials, and biomass that factories have to synthesize. And most landowners walk past it every season without collecting a single pound. What trees do you have growing on your property now? Did you learn they could produce something you aren't tapping yet? Let us know in the comments. See you in the next video.